Tēnā koutou katoa, no mai haere mai, ko Eve de Castro Robinson tōku ingo. Welcome to a very special evening of music to celebrate the very special Martin Lodge. Where are you, Marty? Hope he's in here somewhere. <laughs> um, I didn't quite hear what was just said, but obviously keeping masks on when you're anywhere near Martin at, at, in the interval or afterwards is uh, mandatory. Uh, the interval will be quite short, just to keep the, the evening's proceedings ticking along, uh, but the bar will be open. Martin, or as you've already heard me call him rather cheekily, Marty, I'm apparently one of only a few permitted to use that cheeky nickname, and I've come to treasure that fact. I like it partly because he's always been very much a Martin, with apologies to anyone who might take that as any form of criticism. <laughs> um, a dapper, very dapper looking fellow, appearing back in the day in crisp white shirt and dressed trousers when the rest of us were just in jeans. His posture and boyish good looks have always been striking. And I remember one year writing in the Auckland Philharmonia's uh, Philharmonia News, quote, despite appearances to the contrary, Martin Lodge has been appointed this year's stout fellow. <laughs> There's an air of the clerical about Marty, a whiff of the aristocracy in his elegant bearing, an accent redolent of a British education, perhaps. But here we have Professor Martin Lodge of Waikato, born in Tauranga, educated in Te Whanganui Atara, a man alert to his surroundings, the power of the landscape, the beauty of nature, the sonic world of Aotearoa, and its indigenous instruments. A deeply intelligent, creative, and craftsman-like composer, as we were about to hear this evening, and fine scholar. In the past few years, I've been very fortunate in spending quality time with Martin and John Pasathas, who very sadly couldn't be with us here this evening. He's just overseas. The three of us, and later more, gathered at John's place on the Kapiti coast for composer retreats, precious times, deep corridor, lively dinners over red wine, and contemplative listening to our own music, and each other's, of course. One night, joined by Ken Young, fellow composer who's here, there were requests uh, as we all prepped dinner together, a bit like that film, uh, The Big Chill, a little bit like that. Um, Put on Led Zepp 3, came Martin's voice from the kitchen. And for a short time, this sophisticated creator of fine-hewn counterpoint, this writer of astute musicological tracts, urbane art lover, horticulturalist, enophile, and whatever that meant, and much more, <laughs> quietly bopped at the sink in a happy haze of prog rock nostalgia as Robert Plant's voice took us all back to halcyon years of time past. It's always been a pleasure to visit Martin and Gail, there's my mask, admire their cherished garden, statues, the long walk, the many works in progress, Lucy the dog, uh, Martin's cherished cars, the Citroen, as only he pronounces it in this country, <laughs> the Saab, Mellers, the robot, robot lawnmower, prowling the lawns of its own accord and finding its way back to the plug-in machine. Their art collection, happy and bountiful kitchen, and much humour and wit. He has strolled by the water of Leith and navigated the bustling streets of Pornike. He has found solace here on the Waikato plains. He is sustained by music, by art, by thinking, by reading, by communicating, but most of all, by Gail and his beloved whānau. 
Thank you for you, Marty. Kaya te pō te tī matatango te waiatatanga mai a te atua. Ko te ao, ko te ao mārama, ko te ao tūroa. A tī hei mauri ora ki te whai ao, ki te ao mārama. Ko te whakatako tō ranga o te takapau wharanui, o hine nui te pō te karanga o te wā. Nō reira ki o koutau katoa, ko tai tawhiti, ko tai tata mai, te nei au e tū ana, E mihi kau atu ana ki a koutou katoa, a te nā koutou, te nā koutou. E te whaia, Eve, ko rua ko maiko, i whakarite tēnei o ngā kaupapa kōrero mō te rangatira o te pō nei, tēnei te mihi ake. Ka whakaaro ake, ki te araki nui, a pō te tau te whero-whero te tuawhitu a ki ngi tū heitia, e noho atu rā, ki te ahurewa tapu, pai marire ki a rātau, o ti rā, tā tau e hui hui mai nei rotu i tēnei whare tāpare, pai marire ki a tāta. Ko tērā te awa, e kato kato ana e rata rata ana rā, ko wai kato te awa he piko he tanifa, he piko he tanifa. Tau mai ki te whenua o te whare wānanga o wai kato, tēnei te tū, tēnei te mihi. O ti rā ki a koe e te kaupapa, te rangatira, e mātou. Kei hea rā ngā kupu o te ao, e tā whana whana mai ngā rangi aniwaniwa i runga i āko. Ka whakawhiti a kua nei engari, ki a ko rua tahi, ko keo, te nei te mihi arohā, te nei te mihi mai o hātu. Ki a koutou ngā whānau, Ngā hoa, ngā kai tito puoro, ngā kai whakarongo i ngā puoro, ngā kai whakatangi tangi i ngā puoro, nau mai, whakatau mai rā, ki te pō waiata, te pō puoro, o Martin Lodge. Whakawhiti a kē rā, whakawhiti a kē rā. Taku pū tōri nō, No wai rā ngā ngutu, hei whakapā ki o ou, hei puhi te hau o rā. Kia rā ngō nā hia anō tō reo, e hine rau katauri. Te puhi o te tangi, hotu, hotu, moke, moke. When you look at colour and you look at shape, it brings emotion into feeling. I started with a proverb, it was in the night where the God sang the world into existence from the world of light into the world of music. 
And then I finished off with an extract of a lament that was composed uh, by Dr. Hirani Melbourne, a colleague of Martin, over the years. Both him and Richard Nuns, who worked uh, with Martin in bringing Taonga Puro into these spaces and the interweave that it connected with Taonga Puro traditional Māori musical instruments, interweaving into the world of exploration, innovation through composition. And so tonight, we celebrate the colours and the many shapes that the music of our dear friend, Martin Lodge, even though I can't see where you are, uh, 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 the many shapes and colours uh, that our world sees. There are many proverbs all around the world that speak about music. One of the most common is life is music. And tonight we will see snippets of the world as we know of Martin Lodge. And so to you, e te rangatira, to both you and Gail, tenei topo. This is your night to celebrate alongside uh, your many friends, uh, your family, and of course, what we all love, the world of music. So sit back, relax, and let us serenade you with what you have done for us. For me and Taonga Puoro, you working alongside my papa, Hirini, and Richard. I was introduced to you through them, and we continue to build and interweave the magic of music. Music in life allows us to share the tears, to break a smile, and like the first music I heard of yours through Toru, helps unlock doorways that had not been walked before. And so I hope with the legacy that you have left here at Waikato University that they continue to develop this interweave, this bridge of connection. So, e te rangatirei Martin, uh, this short piece I wrote uh, not long after the collection of Taonga Puro that now sits up in the School of Music. Uh, I wrote this short piece in recognition of that goal we had sitting outside the cafe many, many moons ago in getting a collection of Taonga Puro here at Waikato University for the world to share. And so, e te rangatira, tenei tumihi ake, e te whānau, tēnā kūtou katoa.
te meilleur que Kyoko Tai.
Martin has been a mainstay in my life for decades and a man I consider to be my closest friend. My first encounter with him was over the phone in the late 90s. I'd been living in Melbourne for around 15 years and was planning on returning to New Zealand and wanted to undertake graduate studies in composition. I knew nothing of Waikato University, their music program, facilities, staff, nothing. I didn't know Martin Lodge either, but five minutes into that conversation, I knew this was who I wanted to study with. There was something about him that radiated intelligence, knowledge, and openness of ideas, and one of the best conversationalists I've ever met. Those who know Martin will understand what this means. 
Like me, you will no doubt have been somewhat awed by his breadth of knowledge in an incredibly wide range of subjects. A true polymath, a voracious reader, an incisive mind, and a true creative spirit, but also deeply compassionate and generous. Martin also has a very deeply spiritual side, and I've had the privilege of many discussions with him around questions of the true self, the ego, and our place in the universe. Shortly after returning to New Zealand, I met Martin's family, Gail, Alex, and Max, a truly lovely group of people who I know are the cornerstone of Martin's life, providing stability, support, companionship, and deep love. The music department at Waikato has been another constant in his life and in many ways his work family. We have always been a tight-knit group with a single-mindedness of purpose, mutual respect for one another and a comradeship that has been the envy of many. Martin was instrumental in bringing to the fold what became known as the New Zealand Chamber Soloists, Catherine Austin, James Tennant and Lara Hall at its core, together with Ian Worley, David Griffiths, Rachel Griffiths-Hughes, William Dart and myself, our musical group felt, to me at least, complete and indestructible, primarily due to the shared vision we had. It always felt that Martin presided over this with his gentle manner, his fierce intelligence and his ability to read complex situations accurately and act accordingly. Things have changed over the years, including staff, but we still maintain that original vision and our new team is as committed and driven as ever, thanks to Martin's legacy. Martin's cancer diagnosis has come as a huge shock to all of us, but he's still here. And it's a privilege and an honor to be part of this celebration of him, his life and work. My piece, Luce Viva, or Living Light, is an expression of my gratitude to Martin for the years of friendship, laughter, conversation and love. Martin, if I had to choose someone to share a trench with, it would be you.
la viva luce che si mea dal suo docente.
Kia ora Eve has her Marty. I have my Mart. <laughs> Mart is a dignified person. I like to think that at my age, I may be too. <laughs> but he calls me Pete. And we've done that for years. And in 1971, when I began extremely nervously teaching English at Otomotai College in Tauranga, Martin was in my sixth form English class. <laughs> and here was this sea of faces, and I got to know their names quickly, but you know, getting to know them as people comes a little later. But in Martin's case, it was extremely easy because I discovered that on one day of the week after lunch, I had a free period. And instead of wanting to sit and talk desultory rubbish in the staff room, I would go to my classroom in a Nelson block, if anybody remember those, and sit at my desk and try and remember who I was. <laughs> and one day when I went into the room to sit down, there was somebody else there in the room, a pupil sitting. And I said, oh, hello, Martin. How are you? And we started to talk. And we've never stopped. <laughs> and we have had a long and lovely friendship. And last year, we celebrated at a dinner our 50 years. That was a wonderful occasion. I don't want to stand particularly on this stage without mentioning two people who were our great friends and who were great friends of this university. And I refer to Guyan Wells and to Marshall Walker, whose idea for a music department began in their minds and with their actions. And everybody in this place owes an enormous amount to the vision of those two wonderful men. And I also want to mention Martin's ability as a tenacious fighter for what we used to call, without wishing to be controversial too greatly, the humanities, <laughs> which are under threat. Um, I'm thrilled, I'm thrilled to have your agreement. Martin has been a tremendous fighter for the values of the humanities. It has not been easy. I have watched it take a toll on him. And we should none of us forget what a thing it is to make such a brave stand as nobly and, I might say, as effectively as he has. We wouldn't be sitting here now, I'm sure of it, were it not for the fact that Martin fought and fought to keep this music department here. He once told me that he went into battle 
armed with Lao Tzu's The Art of War. <laughs> I thought that was a marvelous thing. Martin and I have talked endlessly. Martin and Gail and my wife Coral and I have had many, many dinners, some of them for no occasion whatsoever. I would get on the internet and I would discover, for instance, that it was the anniversary of Ursula Schröder-Feinen. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say, we must celebrate. <laughs> and then we would all gather at one, each of our houses and have a talk nonsense and drink a bit. Martin and I have spent an enormous amount of time in each other's company, silent, because we were listening to music. Um, you know, there's many a, an unrepentant modernist with a sneaking love for Delius. <laughs> or Rachmaninoff's fourth concerto. Um, Martin has the most Catholic taste in music <laughs> of anyone I've ever known. Uh, the other day, he said, what's that? And it was a song by Julie, sung by Julie London. And I, he said, I didn't expect to hear that here. <laughs> but he enjoyed it. And we've enjoyed all sorts of music and many, many different recordings and always kept talking and thinking about music and also about words as well. We have had one disagreement and that was on the subject of Brahms. <laughs> Benjamin, I used to think that Martin's attitude to Brahms was an affectation to just to jab me with. And I have sometimes played things to him which I have surprised him and I said, that's a late work of Brahms. Oh, rather good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, generally, we have been in wholehearted agreement. And now, because one of the things that we've always been in agreement about namely the love of the music of, surprisingly, Richard Strauss. I would like to invite you to welcome someone whose name doesn't need to be mentioned. There we go.
na mihi nui to the uh, extraordinary Michael Houston. Uh, and with a huge thank you to all the superlative players who've played for us tonight. Uh, there is one final thing left to do. Martin, you might have spotted at the back of the stage a resplendent sapling in the corner. And that is a gift from all the composers. And all the composers here, I'd like to come up on the stage and join me now. <laughs> Peter. Janet, are you here? you a little gift and it's with huge aroha from all of us composers in the form of a liriodendron Allenton gold which we thought would look splendid in your garden and we we would like you to think of it as uh, a musical family tree which connects all of us dearest Martin Well, is there something I can sit on? <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm not normally lost for words, but today, dear friends, it's, it's been such a special day. I can't tell you, I can't begin to tell you what it means to me and the family. It's, absolutely wonderful and um, it's uplifting makes me buoyant it makes me feel exuberant um, but also really humbled by all the beautiful things that have been said and played um, it's truly remarkable i'm going to reach into my pocket don't worry it's not a script of a speech But my memory does need a little bit of help these days. Um, the first thanks I would like to say is actually not a musical one, but a medical one, because without it, I would not be here. As you probably know, completely unexpectedly, four months ago, I was diagnosed with glioblastoma multiforma, which is the most aggressive and difficult form of brain cancer. It's considered incurable. 
So getting a terminal diagnosis certainly changes one's view of life. The standard um, st statistical survival time of a patient like me from diagnosis to death without treatment is four months. Today is four months. So the fact that I'm still alive, and not just alive, but able to be present and really enjoy this occasion is a tribute to the amazing, amazing medical team at Waikato Hospital. We hear a lot of negative things about the public health service, but my word, when your life is on the line, it's there for you. And I've had the whole works, brain surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, psychotherapy, <laughs> oh, truly, <laughs> um, and it's clearly saved my life and made tonight possible, so thank you to the medical people who, to me, are heroes, and I'd like to give a special shout out to the man I call my favourite neurologist, um, a truly exceptional physician, Dr Matthew Phillips, who um, has been incredibly supportive and has also accepted me onto his medical trial of a radical new treatment for incurable cancer. It's called metabolic therapy. <clears throat> and it's a very stringent regime of fasting and keto diets and other things, which is the only therapy in the world that offers hope beyond the four month or 12 month maximum mark. So I feel a great deal of debt and gratitude to be on this medical trial. If it works, it's wonderful. If it doesn't, I've contributed to science and hopefully to help other people. So let's hear it from Dr. Matthew Phillips. It takes a lot of work to put on a concert like this amazing concert tonight. I know that because I've done many of them <laughs> in the past. It takes an inspiration, and in this case, I know the idea came from the wonderful Mike Williams. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> yeah. And he pursued that vision through all sorts of challenges. Um, and was aided very strongly, I know, by a wonderful friend, friend of mine and friend of music, Eve DeCastro Robinson. So, thank you. <laughs> uh, you can't have live music without live performers. And my word, what a starry galaxy of performers we had tonight, the best of the best, with truly wonderful performers. So I feel incredibly blessed to have worked with all these wonderful people as colleagues, got to know them as friends, because they're people I really admire so much. Musicians for whom virtuoso technique is not the end, it's, it's the beginning. And on top of that, you build imagination, insight, empathy. And we saw and heard all that tonight, including some amazing new um, first performances, which you may not have realised, pieces I haven't heard before, even my own. <laughs> <laughs> and they sounded more or less as I thought they would. Um, <laughs> but it's been wonderful to have these people um, to play for us as the audience, including these incredible surprise guests like Michael Houston, which is just wonderful. Thank you, Michael. Um, having another composer write a piece for you is a special, especially moving tribute. So I'd like to thank Michael and David for that really touching personal tribute from one composer to another.
That's really wonderful. And I'd also like to thank you and the audience because <clears throat> the three pillars of music, as you probably know, traditionally are creation, performance, reception, or composer, performer, audience. And being an audience member for this kind of event is not passive. You don't just sit there and think about something else or fiddle with your phone. You actually open your mind and your soul to new experience to be able to change and to communicate with other people. Finally, since this may be a farewell of mine, there are two things I would like to say. <clears throat> Firstly, to young composers and young artists in general, have the courage to be free. Have the courage to pursue your vision, even if it's unfashionable, doesn't accord with social media memes, it's not popular, or someone tells you you're wrong. Be brave and follow your intuition and trust your own soul. Have the courage to be free. Secondly, and in conclusion, I've long believed that one of the most important functions of music is to help us live more richly, um, to give us connections with other people, with the natural world, and perhaps with the world beyond. It extends our consciousness opening us to change to each other. And music achieves that by bringing people together. And this evening's concert has been a beautiful example of music bringing us all together. And I hope being a force for change and for good. It also reminds us, no matter how difficult our individual circumstances may be, in the end, we are not alone. We're not alone. Thank you. <laughs>